Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. I am bringing you an unboxing video of a hilt that I just got in from the UK. I have not done an unboxing video in a, probably about almost two years at least. Um, and usually I'm doing hilts or first impressions of stuff that I've opened up, put together, uh, so I can show it off a little bit. But this hilt is a couple years in the making and I'm gonna to explain to you what that means in just a second. This hilt is the new Mom Hero that just came out or the Magic of Myth. Uh, it is based on the cave de deleted scene from Return of the Jedi. It's Luke Skywalker's second lightsaber. It's the only time, well, one of the only times we actually get to see this hilt uh, on screen. And this was put together by uh, Verity Labs. This is from Brian Rogers, uh, Adam Days, and it was released by Seven Chambers, uh, Lewis Patch. And the reason why I said this is a couple years in the making is because this all started, this whole thing, and why this hilt came to be because back in the early summer of 2018, uh, Seven Chambers and Phoenix Props teamed up together and they told us that we they were gonna be bringing us the, the ultimate hero, that was the title. And, or the hero ultimate edition, it was something like that. Um, and I actually still have my email from when I actually signed up, in per, uh, signed up on the sheet in like late June. Uh, I think it was like June 25th of 2018. And the hilt finally came in in late March of 2019. And when we got it, there were already some irregularities that needed to be addressed. Uh, namely, the the grenade, the, the ring section. The the ring section was uh, completely off in size. The the rings were much fatter than they were supposed to be, and especially from what was actually pictured. Uh, that eventually did get fixed. Both uh, Derek of Phoenix Props and uh, Lewis of Seven Chambers. Uh, they had it corrected, and eventually everybody got new ring sections with the appropriate size rings. Uh, however, the hilt itself was undersized overall, and even though there were some nice accuracies to the hilt at the time that that it came out, and it was it was a well made hilt. Like the the quality of the hilt itself was not was not bad. It was just there were some uh, inaccuracies in the promise of this being the ultimate hero that we were supposed to receive and we we kind of got a, a scaled down version, if you will. Uh, and there are a lot of people that I have spoken to that actually do really enjoy that hilt and like the size of it, even though it is uh, undersized for what the actual hero is. Um, but it started a conversation and there was a, a big conversation within the first couple of days of that hilt coming out. Uh, first it was on the the Facebook, some of the Facebook groups, the uh, especially the Luke uh, Attic Support Group, and then it, it spilled over onto the RPF. And one of the first people I remember having a, a conversation with, or at least kind of seeing, posting a lot of uh, uh, pictures and, and discussing it, uh, was Brian Rogers. And I remember at that point in time, I had done an initial review of it, and. Uh, I remember talking to uh, you know quite a few people, putting pictures out, and it it was being it was definitely being shown that it was undersized. There was a lot of measurements being taken and thrown out there. Um, Brian, I remember actually took it to his mill, I think, and actually started to like mill things down on the on the ring section and kind of like cleaned it up and uh, made it more accurate than what it was, but still undersized and. Eventually, that kind of started a conversation of trying to get a real ultimate hero. So within a couple of months, all of a sudden, a, a new thread goes up on the RPF, and it's basically talking about the hero. And it's, it's this whole page of just transparency of uh, all these pictures, comparisons, overlays, and you could start to see like what was what was developing. And it's definitely been one of the most transparent um, threads out there on uh, on the hero. And there have been quite a few heroes that have come out over the last couple of years. And each one I think has just gotten better and better, just, you know, better references, the overlays, some of the maybe like the, the 3D technology or the CAD technology that's that's being used. Um, is enabling that to happen, but you're, we've definitely seen over the last year, um, the Anakin Starkiller put out 
uh, a hilt over on the RPF that was very well done. Uh, and now we have this mom hero, and this is what I'm going to be mainly talking about tonight. Um, that's why I say this is really a couple years in the making because even though these guys have uh, that Brian and Adam put this thing together over the last year and a half, uh, or it could even be a little bit longer than that, I might even be mistaken, but they put so much time and effort into this thing and to get it right and to really give everybody what the ultimate hero was supposed to be, that initial promise. And I find it ironic that it's, uh, that Lewis from Seven Chambers is actually putting this thing out. So in a way, he is kind of helping to, to bring us that ultimate hero that was promised to us from a, a few years back. Um, a lot of people that were, like, I was part of the trade-in, so I, of course I had the, the Seven Chambers. I literally got it, kept it in the box, and and just kind of put it off to the side. I, I didn't, you know, I, I had initial plans to, to possibly do an install, and then as soon as I started seeing uh, Brian's and, and Adam's, that thread start to go about, talking about the hero, um, I almost forgot about the ultimate hero for a bit because I was so intrigued by what these guys were doing and what they were bringing to the table. Um, and over the last few months, like I had, uh, you know, great conversations with uh, both Adam and Brian and what they were doing, and it, I, I was just so pleased to kind of see how this all all came about. Um, so, with that, I'm just going to open this guy up. I want to show everybody what's going to be coming in the Ultimate Hero. If you uh, ordered one, I know there's a huge delay with DHL uh, that kind of screwed over these guys who uh, who put so much work into this. Uh, and that delay has kind of like made people wait this entire time for these uh, these hilts that were supposed to come out or get delivered to everybody in December. So if you are waiting for one, I want to show you what it looks like. I'm interested to see what this whole thing looks like up close. Uh, we saw some images from both uh, Brian and, and Adam that put their hilts out there that that they've had uh, that they've had on hand for uh, recently. And so we're going to see what these options are. So the people that did the ultimate or that, that had the trade-in from uh, the original Ultimate Hero got the Elite Kit. So there were two kits. There's a Standard Kit and there's an Elite Kit. And the Elite Kit, I believe, comes with... Uh, obviously comes with, with everything. There were multiple grenades that were put in the Elite Kit, uh, both an Idealized and a uh, Cannon. Ooh, such a nice box. Alright, let's get this out of here. Alright, here it is. Magic of Myth. Uh, beautiful box. Oh, it's the Veracity Labs. Excuse me. I said that wrong earlier. Because I think Adam has a, a Verity cosplay. So I think uh, that's where I probably got that from. But it's Veracity Labs. All right. Woo! Right off the bat, this is what you get. As soon as you open it up, this is what's in here. Ooh, I like how it's the cannon rings that are already on this hilt. Oh, wow. A lot of this stuff is already put on. I was not expecting that. Oh, that's really nice. All right, let's check this out. Here we go. Pommel to the top. All right, so we get the pommel, little pommel hole. Okay. Great ring section. Okay. I'm gonna try to do my best to get a lot of these angles. Um, my, you know, I got this new camera, and for some reason the autofocus is not working the way that I want it. So I apologize. Some of this might be a little bit blurrier than I would like. Uh, I'm going to try and do the best I can with some of these angles. Uh, but there are some uh, some really incredible grooves inside the corners of these pommel cubes. Just really, really well done so far. All right, so now they got this sled. So. Control boxes are always one of the biggest things on the hero and how the control boxes are supposed to look. And now what they did was they did this little sled on the inside. Okay, let's see if we can get this. Okay. Now a couple things that have to get done to make this a, a little more accurate is so the bottom of the rail, so there's you can almost see this little ridge, right? So top ridge, 
stays. Okay, this is a, um, oh, I'm gonna screw this name up. I don't know, a beryllium copper. It is some type of copper, I believe, that does start to age with time and it's supposed to look very similar to what's, uh, what's on screen. Uh, I was talking to Adam about that before. Underneath that, you see that little line there. I am gonna end up spray painting that gray. Okay, there is a uh, there's a gray that I will talk about in a in a minute that I'm going to end up using on that, but that's supposed to get spray painted there. Um, I believe Brian uh, and Adam may have gone on both the Facebook pages and also on the RPF and said, "Do not paint the the inside of this." So if you take the sled out of the control box and you're going to end up painting it, uh, you have to be very careful because there the, the i guess there's like there's the tolerance inside so if you end up painting it that might screw up when you're going to put this thing back in so just be very careful uh there it's okay to paint the outside but don't paint the the inside of the of the sled from from what i know not not this portion in here i, I think brian said that's fine but you don't want to paint like the the inside of of this when this comes out because the, the tolerance of it might not uh, might not go back it might not go back in too well look at this control box so this is already put together Beautiful. That's really, really well done. I think this, if I'm correct, I think this is the idealized arrow plate. Um, there's a ton of accessories in here. I'm gonna take those out. We're gonna go through that. Um, but they have multiple accessories in here for both an idealized hilt and a cannon hilt, all right? Um, for those who aren't familiar with idealized, idealized meaning what the hilt um, would be if it was like a perfect hilt. So you would have, so you know, instead of these, so you can see here these, well, so let's go through the rings. So beautiful right here. So you got the thin, thick, thin, thick, couple thick, a little bit thinner. All right. Really, really well done. Okay. I love the fact that it's already anodized. Okay. Now, uh, this is one of the necks that it comes with. And then the beautiful emitter already has the threaded screw. It already has the grub screw in there. And this really interesting, now, okay, that's a little bit better here. Look at this ring around the emitter here on the inside. Uh, no one else has this at this point. Uh, I own quite a few heroes. Uh, and like I said, over the last couple of years, they've just been getting more and more screen accurate as we've as we've gone on, just because there's just, there's better photos. Um, like I said, the 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 3D comparisons of the hilts that are out there and the angles, the different angles that they've taken. Uh, Brian and Adam have done an amazing job creating uh, an, uh, just a, a matching overlay, shot for shot, and it's just it's just incredible. But no other hero hilt at this point in time. Oh, Man, that glare is killing me. So right there, you can almost see there's almost like, a, it's almost like a little bit like of an impression on the inside of the nipple here, okay? Um, that That's great. All right, so before, but I love that it's already anodized. So a lot of the other, some of the other hilts that have come out, uh, some of them are anodized, but some of them are just bare aluminum and you have to do all the finish work. Uh, I I did enjoy it. it it's, it's a little nerve wracking because you have to tape everything off. Um, have the right paint, make sure you have the right conditions when you're painting so that the paint doesn't uh, dry um, unevenly. Or if you applied it unevenly, you have to might you might have to repeat it and do it again. Then you have to sand it off the rings. So there's definitely some work involved when you have to do that. And you might be cool with that. You might be like, I don't care, it's fine. And I actually, I did enjoy doing it, but I know for some people, they were actually looking to have other people go out there and paint it. Um, my man Hallowax, he's one of the guys who offers those services uh, and does all that uh, with with those hilts. So uh, you know, people were people were hiring out to get that done. But to have the hilt already anodized for me, uh, I do like that a lot better. It, it's clean. I know it's well done. So far, so far, pretty impressive. It feels nice and smooth. No, uh, no, no rough edges around the hilt. Uh, Really like that a lot. What neck is this? I'm gonna see which one they put on. So with the Elite kit, this came with, I believe, all, I'm gonna show off the control box that way. 
I believe this came with all of the different necks. There was an aluminum, a brass, and a copper neck. All right, so this is the other ring section. So this is gonna be the cat, this is gonna, sorry, this is gonna be the idealized ring section. Okay, so you guys are gonna see what that, what that will look like. I mean, just amazing for the, that you're getting both Canon and Idealized. Uh, I will give credit. The first people that I knew that uh, I remember doing that uh, was Vader's Vault. When they did their second generation uh, installed hero, they offered you both the Canon look and the Idealized rings. They had both options on the Gen 2 Hero. Um, so I will give those guys credit for that. How many? All right, so let's see, what do we got? You got double necks for both. Okay, all right. All right, everyone gets their own like little Allen screw. Okay. Uh, this, yeah. Okay. Uh, this could be a blade adapter, if I'm not mistaken. I think this might be the 7 8 blade adapter. Um, I want to make sure I'm right with that. All right, let's start taking all this stuff out. Uh, all right, here's one of the necks. All right, pretty sure this is the brass. Okay, so it looks like the copies are on. Here's aluminum. Uh, I am going to be using a, an aluminum neck and I'm going to be painting it gold. And I will show you exactly what gold I'm going to be using because the neck in the movie was painted. It was, I think, painted on aluminum. All right, here is one of the, I think this might be the 7 8 emitter cap. Okay, uh, for showing off the necks here. Okay. Again, brass, aluminum, uh, copper's already on there. Uh, I think we have a nice setup for either a tri -Cree or a Neil Pixel for this. Now again, this could be, you can make this your FX hilt. You can make this a static hilt. Uh, Brian and Adam have already confirmed that later this year, they are gonna be doing a, uh, a static run of this hilt, which I may actually get. Uh, I've really wanted this ultimate hero to be like my definitive FX hero. Um, I do have quite a few. I think this is Brian's, if I'm not mistaken, this is his True Blue PCB. On that, uh, that blue substrate. Just really nice. It, the, the angle, I'm going to try to get this really nice, but if you can see, like the blue is almost like a two-toned. There's almost like a lighter blue towards the edge of the card, and then in the middle, it's a little bit darker, uh, which again was on the, the, the current prop that... Uh, that's been on display. Really nice tri ring. Uh, tri rings have been very difficult. If you've looked at some of the heroes over the years, the tri rings kind of all over the place. The size is slightly different. Um, this is nicely rounded. Some of them have had like almost like a sharp triangle to it. Uh, the triangles have been different sizes. Some of them really like flop around. On the hilt itself, the, the, the tri-ring really kind of should almost like stay in place. If you look at it, it almost stays at an angle where it kind of doesn't, doesn't move. So we are going to have some fun putting that together. And I just got a brand new vise to, uh, to get that thanks to Halloax's suggestion. Instead of using uh, some like soft pliers or something like that. Vented pommel. Okay, that's one of the designs. Standard venture pommel, similar to uh, to what we've seen in the past. But I see some other things in here. Let's see what else we've got. 
Got another uh, threaded cup. All right, now this is a different vented pommel that is a little bit more static looking. Uh, and it has sound, hidden sound vents. If you can see that there. This is a really cool style pommel, and I've been seeing more and more of these on some of the more, uh, the, some of the nicer hills, some of the ones that are even a little bit more expensive uh, lately. These like hidden sound vents that look kind of static, these pommels. And it's uh, it's a great look. It's it's really nice. You know, as much as like this is this is the standard. You're, you're you know you're probably going to get more sound coming out through here, obviously. However, um, it's nice. But I, I there's just something about this static look that I, I appreciate a little bit more. So just really well done. But again, look at how many options you're getting. You know, you're not just stuck with one pommel. You, you're, you're getting multiple options. Okay. And the other guy I'm getting here. And here's your, your one inch. Okay. So again, here's your, your one inch emitter cap. And then there is your seven eighth. Okay. So they give you both options as well as, of course, the static. All right. So let's take this bad boy apart. Let's see where this thing comes uh comes off here. Oh, and the one nice thing that this does have, this has that little tiny dimple. If I, oh, I tried getting this on one of my last reviews uh, with a Yuma. There's a real small dimple that's right there. I, I'm trying to, to pick that up. That's been found recently on, on the Hero from some of the pictures that they found. And I'm happy that they put that in there, that they got that in. It, I mean, it almost looks like that's where a set screw goes. And there's, I know there has been debate over what that is. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm not sure. I just kind of read what they read what they put on there. But there is no actual set screw in on the cap itself. Okay, set screw is right here inside the threads. Uh, I like that it's hidden. You can, like I said, you can keep this thing static if you wanted to, and just put it up on your, put it up on your mantle, and it will stay, and it's a beautiful thing. I think, yeah, there we go. I think this has a steel neck inside that's threaded which gives this a hell of a lot of support in here. And one of the things that Brian and Adam are going for is they wanted this thing dual worthy that you could smack the crap out of it. Uh, and a, a couple, a little while ago, a couple of weeks ago, I remember I reached out to Brian and asked him what the rating on this would be. And they rated this thing for, for moderate to heavy dueling. And I wanted to make sure I could say that. So, and he said he wants, he thinks the people should be able to go out and, uh, beat the crap out of beat the crap out of this thing all right so you've got two cups here okay uh my guess is this larger one here is going to be for the tri -cree, if you wanted to do tri -cree. and the smaller one here is going to be for neopixel that's going to be my guess okay so again this is more of a, a copper tri -cree. There we go. Here's the steel bolt that goes in to thread that in there. All right, so now we're gonna take this guy off. Pretty sure. Well. Okay, so. Uh, I did speak to Adam before I went on here and did this video, and there were a couple things that he said might be missing from the kits that they're apologizing for, but they are gonna be sending them out. Okay, I wanna go over that in a second. Ah, there we go, got it. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so again, copper neck, taking that bad boy off. I'm gonna switch it out for my aluminum one. 
these were even oiled too. You could where you could see the oil on uh, on the threads in here. Everything goes on nice and smooth. It's really nice. No gaps in there. That looks great. So, okay, painting this thing. All right. All right, so this is how this goes. So again, this is a reinforced neck. All right, now, the hero, he'll, okay, so again, inside, everybody wants to see what that looks like. All right, plenty, uh, plenty of width in that, in that steel threaded rod in there for, uh, for wires to pass through for either NeoPixel or for Tricree. Uh, this will definitely be NeoPixel for me. Okay, so paint. Okay, if you are painting this, you should be doing the, well, I'm gonna be using anti gold. So first off, okay. This has been the identified as the gold standard, no pun intended. Uh, this is this is uh, antique gold from Ace Hardware. Again, if you're in the states, you should be able to find this. Over in the UK, uh, I am terribly sorry, I don't know the paint on that. But if you go onto the RPF site, and I, I think Brian was putting out uh, paint options for uh, for over in the UK, or for over for overseas, I should say, on on what what gold to use. I think because I think that has been identified within the last year. So again, I'm going to be using this, and I'm going to be painting the neck here. I'm um, sorry, this section here, down here on the wind vane, getting the top of the lip, and then if you go underneath, this might be tough. Okay, just. All right. Not this here, but underneath. So where the wind vane comes up into that lower portion of the emitter, there should be some uh, antique gold right under here on the underneath portion. Okay, not on the face of it. Uh, that's what I did on my Anakin Star Killer, uh, based on uh, Hallowax's video. I'm going to be doing that again to uh, to get this guy. Uh, up to snuff, and I love that I could take this apart. The hard thing with the Anakin Star Killer, and but it, it, it's also nice too, is that it, it was all one piece, so you couldn't take that apart. Uh, you had to tape everything off. There's no seams or anything like that. But with and with this guy here, the one thing nice thing that I, I do like is I can take all these pieces off, paint them separate, let them dry, and then put it on, and I don't have to really tape anything off. I will when I paint this, the lip here on the the top of the wind vane. Um, that I, I will tape off the the ring section before I start painting that, uh, and of course I'll tape off the emitter before I paint the bottom portion of that very first uh, underling here, under underneath that that uh, where the neck meets up with the emitter. But that is fantastic. And now, like I was saying before, now I think if I remember, oh yeah, look at this. I like that this comes off here. I like that a lot. And then also you have this here too that comes off. Okay, so again, depending on what pommel you're gonna go with. Okay, static cap or either of the other vented pommel caps. For those of you that are going to do FX and put electronics in this, uh, I know that Adam has already been working on a crystal chamber. Uh, he's already put a prototype up and shown photos of that on the RPF and on the Facebook pages. I didn't even talk about the alignment of the of the cubes, so check that out. All right, let's see if I can line this up right. Get this straight. I'm looking at this thing in a mirror image, so sometimes that screws me up. Okay, so if you look here, right, 
So a lot of heroes for a number of years basically had the, the, this pommel centered with the control box going straight down. And it's not supposed to be. They're, they're, it's slightly off-centered. Uh, they got that nailed. They got that down. It's just slightly off, which, uh, which matches what the, the prop should be. Okay, so for the rails here, okay, so for underneath, now I believe uh, Adam and Brian both talked about a, uh, a shark gray that's being used. Um, the one I have from when I did my Attic in Starkiller last year is uh, a Tam Tamaya gray that I, that I used. Uh, I'm sorry, Germ I'm sorry, Tamaya, it's a German gray, TS4, if, uh, if you are ordering that. Uh, I don't know how different that is than the shark gray that's that's being talked about right now. Uh, this to me was like a, it was a really good color. I'll probably end up using that for this. It looks like the control box can come out. There's two, if you can see in here. So there's two screws. There's channels in there for wiring. Now there is going to be a reveal board that's coming out. Okay, so that's being finalized. Uh, it's two PCBs from uh, what I remember. Well, it's I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. There is, it's a two-layered board from what I have seen. It looks like there is a, a PCB to go towards the bottom where you're going to connect all your wires and run to your soundboard. And then there's a top reveal board that looks just like the deleted cave scene where Luke thumbs up the uh, card, is filling it with it with the tool, and then closes it up. And that reveal board, what it looks like there, uh, that's being they're recreating that and they're going to be sending that out separately so love that idea I think that's great um, I again I am going to take out the sled here out of this uh, control box and I am going to and I am going to look to paint it although I think I'm going to have to somehow I'm either going to have to figure out how to get the, the cubes off Yeah, I'll have to figure that one out because some of that's already put on here already. Um, okay, so a couple things that and uh, that Adam spoke about to me is so these cubes here, right? These are supposed to be functional. Okay, these are supposed to press. Um, there's supposed to be springs that are involved in here so that you can actually use these as switches. Okay, just like on the prop, just like how they they had it in the movie that those springs did not come with the kit they were supposed to um, they are going to be sent out when they do the reveal board so uh, don't get upset those are going to be coming uh, and any if uh, I've also been told that some accessories were were missing from some kits uh, those also will be going out as well so you know don't uh, if you are missing something uh, I would say probably just let let Brian or Adam know and uh, and those guys have been pretty good about taking care of everything. But from what I've heard, that any uh, anything that's been missing is going to go out with the reveal board. Uh, like so, for me, I am I do not see the idealized. I'm sorry, I do not see the cannon arrow plate, um, which the arrows are slightly like offset, and that I'm pretty sure this is the the idealized one because these look pretty centered to me, but. I listen. I'm happy that the the control box is put together. Again, a lot of times you are the one that's doing all this. It doesn't come already set like this. Like typically, you're the one who's putting the the arrows uh, inside the plate, or gluing them, or taping them in, screwing it to the control box, putting the the black boxes in, and securing it inside. Uh, and I'm not. I don't have to do that here. Uh, I I really really like that. I like that it's already done. Save save me the time and effort. So again, so all right, so and then here's the this is the idealized. I'm sorry, this yeah, this is the idealized one. So again, this is for the elite kit. Okay. So keep that in mind, guys. If you got the standard kit, you might have had to pick I, I, I didn't even look at the standard kit, so I don't even know if you picked it or if it just came with the uh, with the canon style or if you got to pick which one you want. I'm not really sure about that. But I just know that they're both sold out right now on Seven Chambers website. They are supposed to be coming out with more from what I heard that they did. They are going to be making more of these. 
So if you did not get on the run initially, have no fear, more is going to be coming. This one does not have a set screw inside the threads for the emitter cap. Not, not the end of the world. Those are easy things to get. Or you just take the one out of the one cup and you put it into this one. But everything seems to be pretty good. Everything's moving uh, threaded very nicely. Yeah, see this one has the this one has the, the threaded. Yeah. Right there. That one has the grub screw. Uh, the other one does not, so you could always just take one out, switch it. If you ended up having if you do get to. Yeah, so here's your seven so this is what this looks like, right? So your seven this is your this is your one inch, this is your seven eighth. So this is nice. Very nice guys. Uh, very happy with this. I look forward to finishing this up before I do any of the electronics. Uh, like I said, I am gonna be waiting for for Adam's crystal chamber to come out. Um, the prototype looked great. I can't wait to see that thing. Uh, wait, I can't wait to finally get that in so I can kind of prioritize this and make this my, uh, my favored hero install. Let's run this little card through here. Hold on, hold on. This is going to go. Just going to fit it just right. I bet you it's a real tight fit. Well, it's a real tight fit, all right. Okay. I may have to do a little sanding. Yeah. Whoop. All right, I got to do a little sanding on this. Not the end of the world, but see if I can just kind of get it in a little spot there. All right, there. Okay, so get a little bit of an idea of what that's going to look like. Um, this has a nice weight to it, empty. Uh, again, it feels like a really nice, solid hilt. Uh, I love all the accessories for for the elite kit. This is this is everything that I got, guys. Okay, you can see it here. Take a look. Everything that comes with it. Um, again, if anything is missing from the kit, just let those guys know. Reach out to them. Uh, they've been pretty upfront about everything uh, and trying to make this such a, a good experience. This is their first uh, production run that they put out. They got they have a bunch of other hilts that they are going to look to release and uh, now that this is is done and just about in the bag I'm sure they are, uh, they're going to start releasing more information about that uh, guys very very happy with this some really cool accessories uh, I don't even know what I'm going to do with all of them because there's I'm not even going to use some of these things so I, I got to figure out what I'm going to do um, very happy with this again guys this is the magic of myth or the mom hero uh, this is the FX kit. Just making sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, great presentation box. As of right now, guys, I think this is these guys set out to make this the most accurate FX Luke hilt that is out there on the market today, and they, I think, they have succeeded. They have done a great job. There's definitely a couple little things on this, little details that, that are on this hilt that I have not seen on others. Uh, really nice, really nice control box. Uh, again, control box has been one of the hardest things to really nail down. And it just looks so good. There's these, these lines. I wanna see if I can maybe get it from this angle in here. Okay. So when this card sits in here, just like in the film, it should sit like slightly 
slightly up. There's a there's going to be a gap between where the card sits and and just just a little bit underneath. And that's where you're going to see these two reveal boards. You're going to have the the well, you'll have the bottom PCB that connects to the switches, that connects to the the arrows, the LEDs and the arrows. And you are going to see the actual reveal board from the movie that's going to sit on top of it. And I think there's even going to be a, a little um, switch, a kill switch, that's going to be inside the control box that you can turn it on or off, uh, again, just to get the lights going on the uh, on the LEDs. Uh, and again, you, 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 know, you don't have to make this, you, you do not have to make this thing uh, an FX. You can keep it static, and it's going to be the, the most accurate static that's sitting on your that's sitting on your uh, your dresser. But yeah, guys, really, really like this. Oh, you know what? The screws are uneven here. So you know what? Maybe this is the the Canon um, the Canon Arrow plate. Uh, the other thing that I know is supposed to be coming are Neil Pixel LEDs for the arrows that go behind them that are going to help to light them up when. Uh, when you do that with the reveal board. I think those those did not come in the kit. Those did not come with this, but I think that's something that's coming probably with the reveal board. Uh, and that also will most likely come with, again, with the springs that are supposed to make the black boxes functional. So, uh, yeah, guys, this is it. All right, this is the mom. Finally got it. Like I said, this thing feels like it, it's been uh, a year and a half, probably a little bit longer since the the initial concept I think started to, to come out I might be wrong on that date but that's kind of like what I have in my head from uh, I'm thinking about time frame wise of how everything started yeah because after that after yeah March of 2019 is when the the ultimate hero came out so just after that so you know actually it's closer to two years but from when that started, how that all came about to where we are now, I'm, uh, I'm very happy for these guys. I have supported them since they started coming out with those threads and the information that they were. Uh, to me, I'm very happy with this. If any, if you, anyone's a Luke Hero fan, this is something that you're going to want to get. You're going to want to get on the next run that these guys have coming up. Um, I, I, I'm not really seeing a lot of any faults with this thing. All right, uh, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, uh, I will stand it up. I'm not comparing it to anything else. I, I don't want to bring any other hilts out here. I kind of just want to enjoy this unboxing and, and show this off. Once I put everything together, paint it, um, I might do a little comparison video. But for right now, I want to utilize, I just want to have this in its glory and kind of just show this off. But again, um, these guys are giving you multiple neck options, multiple pommel options, a great uh, accurate PCB card for the control box for the hero, multiple emitters, one inch, seven eighths, and of course the static. Fantastic control box. The pommel cubes, guys, the pommel cubes are very hard to get. These are not easy. And they did a great job. There's, there's things on here I feel like you almost you can't you, you almost can't even see and she's just these little details how it's how it angles down at the very bottom you know how this how those guys did this hill back in uh, back in return of the Jedi no one thought that people would be you know people this many years later almost 30 years later we we I'm sorry almost 40 years later excuse me we'd uh, we'd be so obsessed with this hilt still but very clean guys um, anodizing very well done looking forward to painting this and putting it all together uh, so with that guys if you have any questions like always put them down below I'm gonna do my best to answer them and uh, anyone who's waiting on this hilt right now it's it's on its way guys it's coming you guys are gonna enjoy the hell out of this and that's about it so thanks a lot guys enjoy the rest of your evening take care till next time